Hello everyone. Uh, today we're going to be starting off with a new a new series on automata and computability. So it's basically on theory of computation, but I'll be going more into the technical and logical part rather than the theoretical part, and uh, like how you would solve uh, problems regarding regarding theory of computation. So at first I'll be discussing about uh, deterministic finite automata. So a deterministic finite automata or a DFA consists of a finite set of states. States are denoted by circular symbols. A finite set is this, a, by circular, uh, sorry, a circular diagrams like nodes in graphs. A finite set of symbols, uh, which could be A, B, C, or 0, 1, or anything like that. A transition function, a transition function is basically the from from the initial state uh, that, that takes two arguments the initial the state the initial state and the alphabet and the it equals to the next state that it goes that it goes to a star state is the one that the whole diagram the whole dfa starts from the state that it starts from a set of final or accepting states are basically the states that uh, that accepts the whole dfa uh, the dfa language so uh, this is basically how a DFN looks like, this diagram here. So Q0, Q2, and Q1 are the states, and 0 and 1 are the alphabets, and uh, the start state is Q0, and the finishing state is Q1. Uh, and uh, the deterministic finite automata, the main thing uh, about that is, is that it's finite, means it's a finite state machine. Because if you give one, if you, uh, like, for every state there has to be all possible uh, all possible alphabets given for example since the alphabet given for this language is 0 and 1 so for every state there has to be all possible moves with all the alphabets used well uh, i'll explain that after i see, i show some examples so then it will be clearer so and this is the transition table so it's basically another way of representing this whole dfa diagram so uh, as you can see, Q and Q0 is the, uh, the start state, Q1 is the uh, accepting state. So at Q1, when the input is 0, it goes to Q2. At, uh, at Q0, sorry. At Q0, when the input is 0, it goes to Q2. So as you can see, at Q0, when the input is 0, it goes towards Q2. And when the input is 1, it goes towards Q1. So similarly, for all the other states, the same thing is done. This, rep this side, this column represents all the states. They will not be repeated. They'll all, always be written once. And these are the input alphabets. It could be zero. Uh, if the input alphabets were A and B, so then a, instead of zero and one, A and B will be placed here. All right. So uh, DFA is a five tuple. Five tuple. Uh, uh, um, it's represented as a five tuple. So Q Q is the states number of states. Uh, sigma is the alphabet. Delta is the transition function, Q0 is the start state, and F is the finishing state. So, let's look at some examples. So, if you're given a substring that starts with 0, that, uh, if you're given a string that has the substring 0101, and it could have any, any number of, uh, any alphabets before and after, but it just has to contain 0101, what will be the DFA for it? So the DFA here uh, that's drawn is, th there are five states, so uh, 0, 1, 0, 1 has to be the substring, so 0, 1, 0, 1. Alright, but we have to, uh, DFA ha uh, considers all the possible outcomes when all the alphabets are given. So for example, if 0 is given, it goes to the next state. But if one is given, it stays in this state as many one. If uh, for example, if as many ones come, that it will keep on moving and keep keep on moving in this state, which is the start state. So if zero is encountered, it goes to the next state. Again, if another zero is encountered, it, it will stay in the same state uh, because that is still acceptable. But if a one is encountered, then it goes to the next state because we have to progress as we is get as we start getting this substring. So a substring could be something like 0, 0, 1, 0, 1. So that's why this is acceptable. So 0, 0, 1, 0, 1. And it's accepted. So for for knowing if your DF is acceptable or not, it's better if you could key, if you could write all some some uh, example uh, some example strings that would come from the DFA. For example, here 0, 1, 
one one zero zero and it's not accepted because zero one zero one is not a substring in this in this uh, what you called in this uh, string so again this one should be accepted because as you can see zero one zero one is here like this part is the zero one zero one substring so uh, before that and after that whatever comes we don't care but as long as this zero one zero one is there we accept the string so let's see if it's accepted zero one zero zero then one zero one and then one so that's how the dfa is drawn now in dfa as you can see for every state there is always a zero and a one uh, outcome like if if it's a state a what will happen when one is encountered what will happen is zero is encountered same way with state b what will happen is zero is encountered what will happen if one is encountered so we have to uh, we have to include all the possible com uh, all the possible things that could come out if uh, zero and one if the alphabets if, if the alphabets are gi given are two which are zero and one then for every state whatever happens uh, whichever state is whichever state it goes to whichever state whatever is a transition function for every state uh, all of them have to be shown so if you just wrote zero if you just wrote for for, for state b if you just uh, wrote uh, that when when zero is encountered is state state B, but you don't give any sorry if, if one is encountered you go to state C But you don't give any sort of possible any sort of uh, Explanation as to what will happen when zero is encountered then it's not a DFA DFA has to have all the states has to have all the possible outcomes as you can see even in C if you're in state C We, ha we have given uh, the transition functions we have given the transition arrows for each of the alphabets for zero it goes to state d and for one it goes to state b right and for d also if for zero it goes to if it goes to state b and for one it goes to e so uh, this will come as as you keep on practicing on uh, drawing in dfa it's pretty logical you just first if the sub if for substring stuff uh, for for questions that require substrings you always need to first define uh, the, all the arrows that will go to for 0 1 0 1 and uh, and ends of the final state and after that whatever comes to whatever strings come we don't care about it and whatever string comes before what that is when one comes we do handle it we still keep on staying in the same state and when when zero comes we go to the next state we progress as we get parts of the substring so again, we, I drew the transition table for this. When it's in state A and the alphabet is one, we st go to state B, and when the alphabet is zero, we go we go to state. Sorry, it's reversed. Yeah, yeah. So when we when we're state A and we encounter zero, we go to state B, and when we are encounter one, we go to state A. Similarly, for all the other states, it's given. A star denotes the accepting state, and the arrow denotes the start state. So let's go to the next example even number of a, st a set of strings which has even number of ones and one or two zeros even number of ones is it could be two four six eight ten uh, as many like uh, the, the ones will be in terms of even numbers and uh, it will be accepted if if there are one or two zeros like if, if there are one zero if there's one zero it will be accepted or if there's two zero it will be accepted but if there's more than one or two zeros then it will not be accepted all right so how do we solve this? First, we uh, first w when we encounter, oh, first let's handle how what will happen if we encounter one or two zeros. If we encounter one zero, we accept it. If we encounter two zeros, we also accept it. Uh, so there will be one uh, starting state. Forgot to give this arrow. Sorry. If we encounter zero. The, we go towards an accepting state when we encounter another zero we also go towards another accepting state but we if we encounter further further if we encounter more zeros we don't go to the accepting state this goes to a form of death state now, what is a death state death state is something that will not ever accept the string like whenever uh, you have some alphabet and it does not go any in into any other state um, into any other state except the uh, what you call the accepting state then you encounter then you just push the uh, string towards a death state right so when when you encounter zero when there are one zero or two zeros and we reject it when there's more than one or two zeros so what do we ha how do we handle even number of ones 
So when when there's we encounter one one, we go to this state, and when we encounter one another one, so we can we go to this state, right? So uh, we can we keep on. So we keep on exchanging position of one and one and zero and one and zero. This should be so. These two conditions have to be fulfilled in order to reach the accepting state. So let's write some example strings in order to find out, in order to verify if our uh, DFA is correct or not. So when we encounter one zero zero one, this should be accepted because there are even number of ones and there is also one. Uh, there are also two zeros. So we encounter one zero zero one. So we reach the accepting state. Now let's uh, find and uh, let's go, go with another string one one zero one one. So one one zero one one. So we reach the accepting state again. Now for this string, there are three. There are even there is odd number of ones and two zeros. Two zeros is fine, but odd number of ones is not acceptable. So one 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 zero zero. We don't reach an accepting state. Same goes for the, for this. So zero. 1 1 1 0 we don't reach the accepting state right so how do we construct this dfa we first uh, uh, try to fulfill one of the conditions and then we try to join these conditions because the the we have like these two conditions are joined by an and if there was or we don't we don't need to relate both of these conditions with each other and another thing we need to keep in mind a mind as i said before is that um, is that uh, what you call uh, a DFA has for every state in a DFA uh, all the possible alphabets need to be included so for this state let's name it a for this state we know which state it will go to when we encounter 0 and when we encounter 1 same for this let's say it's B we know it will go to state C when it encounters 0 and when it, it goes to state D where it encounters 1 Again, when it goes to 0, it goes to F, E, and it goes to F when it encounters 1. So for every of every state, all the possible uh, functions are, all the possible transitions are given for all the alphabets. And that's the main criteria of a DFA. So let's look at another one. Set up all strings with number of zeros divisible by 5 and number of 1s divisible by 3. So there will be there should be 5 10 15 20 uh, num uh, uh, zeros sorry ones no zeros and 3 6 9 uh, 3 6 9 uh, number of ones so to the power of 5 and to the power of 3 uh, 0 should be to the power of 5 and 3 uh, 1 should be to the power of 3 right so right so as you can see in this diagram it should, be, it should be a set of all the strings. So if we don't encounter these, it will still enter an accepting state. But if, if not, it will go towards zero. Uh, it will, first, it will, first we need to construct that for, uh, for four zeros, it won't accept. But for f the fifth number of zero, it will accept. So it will keep on going in multiples of five. So suppose there are ten zeros. So zero, zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So it will keep on going to uh, with 10 if, uh, multiples of 5, zeros in multiples of 5. And we need to join these because it's the, this whole uh, string was made, uh, the whole uh, question was in the question, it was given that both of these conditions have to be uh, uh, met. So when the, in, when the output is 1, so when there are two ones, we don't accept it, but on the third one, we accept it. So it could be in, it would, like this DFA would go on in multiples of three for the input alphabet one. So similarly, we join, we, we do the similar function and we join it and it will keep on, uh, it, it will, this will accept, this will be accepted because uh, whatever input you give, like for example, this is the input that I'm giving. So there are five zeros, right? So zero 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 zero, and then one one one. So it's accepted. Now let's go towards this. The, the DFA is something that you would understand, like uh, that you do, that you would construct properly if you could find out, uh, jot down at least four to five examples, uh, four to five example strings, and then test it out in your DFA. And if it works, then your DFA is foolproof. 
So let's look at this string. 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 1, then 0, 0. Now this was a really complicated one and this was accepted. So this shows that how foolproof this DFA is. Now let's go towards the wrong string. So there is four zeros and then one one. So it's, it does not enter the accepting state. So the DFA is not accepted. So this, uh, the, I mean the, the string is not accepted. So this DFA is foolproof and it accepts all the set of strings that are divisible, divisible by five and it's uh, uh, all the set of ones that are divisible by three. All the set of zeros that are divisible by five and all the set of ones that are divisible by three. So yeah, I hope you understood uh, the DFA, uh, the concept of DFA and how to draw it. And if you're given say, example strings, example questions, sorry, not strings, example questions, the first step would be to jot down four to five, uh, four to five um, example strings that would match your match the question. And after that, draw the DFA accordingly. If the clause is and or or, if it's and, then it's uh, then you know that both of these conditions have to be met together. And if it's an or, then they could be met individually. So uh, when it's an and, it's a bit tougher because you have to join both of these conditions somehow and relate them somehow. And also the third rule that you should remember is that for every state, all the possible outputs have to be given. As you can see, even for this state, the even for this state and all these states, the state the transition for zero and the transition for one. Since the input alphabet is zero and one, the transition for all the input uh, the input alphabet is given. All right. So I hope you understood the concept of DFA a little bit from this video and give a thumbs up to encourage more. To encourage more of tutorials from automata and computability and uh, good luck.